How are you doing? I'm Doc Fort from JKOwners.com. Uh, I get a lot of PMs and requests for uh, simple repairs because a lot of people that own you know, the Jeep GKs really have never worked on their own vehicle ever before. And now that they own a Jeep, they want to start learning more mechanics. So I thought I'd do a couple videos of some simple shit that uh, most of us take for granted, but a lot of new Jeep owners have absolutely no clue how to do. Uh, first thing, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing brakes. Probably the easiest and simplest thing that any home auto mechanic can do. Uh, the tools you're going to need for it, really simple. Okay, uh, This is for the Jeep JK specific. Now the front and rear brakes use the same tools, so you don't need to, to have any weird ass tools for it. Uh, you're going to need, of course, a new set of pads. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be doing the rear, so these are rear pads. You're going to need um, a 15 millimeter wrench, um, half inch wrench or whatever the equivalent is, some brake cleaner, and a big C clamp or a um, brake caliper resetting tool. Big C clamp works fine. They're always good to have in your garage because you can use them for a lot of shit. Okay. <clears throat> Now, first thing, of course, you're going to jack up your vehicle, make sure it's secured, take off the wheel, get everything out of your way. Uh, you, once you notice that your brakes are starting to squeal or starting to get worn, I mean, you can look through the back and you can see how much your pads are worn. When we get to that, I'll show you exactly how bad these pads are worn. And back here, you have your two caliper bolts. Uh, this one right here at the top, and you can see that it's free floating. You have the little rubber, uh, the little rubber gap filler thingy. And what you're going to do is you take 15 millimeter wrench and stick it on the inside and your half inch or much equivalent stick it on the outside and of course you take it off uh, one of the things that kicks the ass of most uh, first time mechanics is the whole <laughs> righty tighty lefty loosey believe it or not and the problem is because when they're working on brakes, they forget that everything is backwards. So, you know, just pay attention to what the hell you're doing. Don't snap off any bolts. Now, these are real easy. Um, once they get corroded and shit after a while, then they become a pain in the ass. And you remove the, the, two caliper, uh, the two caliper mounting bolts, put them aside, and then go and just grab the caliper, and it should slide right off. And then what you're going to do is go and take the caliper and put it up somewhere where it's not going to fall out of the way. Okay, I'm just going to take mine and drop it up here because you don't want it to um, you don't want it to dangle on the brake lines because it causes problems. Okay, and now right here you have your your pads, and they just pop right out. Just grab them. And sometimes I want to be a little pain in the ass, but they come right out. Okay. Uh, while you're here, you want to go and inspect, um, inspect, your, inspect your hardware, make sure nothing's all corroded. Uh, make sure the little retaining clips um, aren't all corroded and looking like ass. Now, w with your first time doing this, go and take, and take your parts off and put them down on the ground in reference to how they go back on the vehicle. This way you have a visual, this way you know where the hell things go when you replace them with the new ones. Uh, the backside one, uh, has this little this little metal tab. It's a brake squealer. When your pads get fully worn, the little tab hits against the brake, hits against the rotor, and makes a squealing noise so that you know your brakes are worn. Now you can see how much is on here, and this is the new pad. So you can definitely see how much these are worn. Okay. Now the next thing is, uh, depending on the manufacturer of your brake pads, they'll give you recommendations of what you need to go and put on the back side of the pads. Um, either anti-squeal or high pressure grease. Uh, these ones recommend high pressure grease. So what I did is you can see that I got high pressure grease on the back side of this. Okay, And then you go and you take a little tiny bit of grease and you smear it on the little mounting tabs on the edge so that they slide in the clips easily. And the easiest way to tell where you need to put the grease is grab one of the other shoes and you can see where this side, where the piston hits, and you can see on this side where the outside of the caliper hits. So just put a little bit of grease, it keeps the squealing down. Okay, now you also notice I keep on cleaning off my hands. Uh, you, wanna, you don't wanna get grease on your rotors. Uh, what happens is when you get grease and oils on the rotors, when you step on the brakes, it 
the pressure between the pad and the rotor will cause it to vaporize and you could actually have serious brake fade or lose the brakes entirely. You go ahead and take, insert your new calipers. They're pretty obvious. They follow the same curve uh, as your rotors. Okay. Slide that all the way in. The other thing you want to do is try to avoid touching the actual contact surface of the pads. Stick this one in. Okay, now the new pads are in place. Now, with the difference between your old pads and new pads in the thickness, uh, so you need to back off the caliper. That's where the big C-clamp comes into play. Uh, you can also use a, they sell specific tools to do this. Um, I personally don't have any need for it because the big caliper always works. And you're going to take the big caliper, sorry, the big C-clamp. Back it off. Make sure it's on the piston. Now, when, once you start getting into high performance uh, calipers where they have multiple pistons, is where this tool, where a, the simple C-clamp doesn't work. But with the normal Jeep calipers with the big single piston, uh, it works perfect. And as you can see, I got one part on the back side, one part on the piston, and all you're gonna do is nice and calmly and slowly crank it down. Don't be in any rush, it's not a big deal. And if you feel any binding or if you feel any tension, uh, you might want to reset and try again because you don't want to go and push the piston off at an angle, score the inside of the caliper, and cause brake leaking. And push the piston all the way in. Well, I'm mad. I'm going to be able to remove any crap or crud that's in there. And let's take off the C-clamp. Reposition the caliper back on. Okay. Go and take your caliper retaining bolts. Put those back in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten them down. Once you're done tightening them down, go and take the brake cleaner, okay? Uh, and you wanna go and hose off um, the surface contact, all the surface area of your rotor, in case you accidentally touched it, on uh, both the front and the back side. Uh, this way you don't have any grease or oil on the calipers. Uh, after that, put back on your wheel, retorque to spec, and you're good to go. Remember that with your new pads, you don't want to go and do any extreme braking as soon as you get them in. Uh, most brake pads will come with instructions and recommendation for a break-in process, so follow them. And that's about it. Uh, this is Gil Fortin from... Uh, jkowners.com, and you have a good day.